Well, today on Nation, a Window Cleaners podcast, I am going to make some enemies, and I apologize, but it's hard truths. I want to hopefully help you, so if you want to get yelled at, then stay tuned to this episode of WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? I figured today I'd actually go over a little bit of Dr. Philish wisdom with you. That's not wisdom, because I'm just some dummy, don't take it as that, but uh, sometimes I can put things out there and you get to evaluate yourself. And going into winter, the way that we are right now when I'm recording this, is a great time to actually have um, a bit of reflection, uh, a bit of a boost in productivity and just awesomeness. And um, winter is the time where you can build so much more that next year, your growth, if that's what you're looking to do, will be so big because of what you do in the winter, not because of what you do in the spring. It's crazy to think that is even possible, but that's how growth happens. It's the rebuild seasons and what you do in the rebuild seasons is to kind of, you know, what gets rebuilt. And it's a weird, weird concept, I know, but I figured I'd yell at you a little bit. And uh, if you need a kick in the pants, awesome. If you don't, uh, my number is 862-312-2026. Feel free to text me all your messages of disdain. Uh, uh, every time I do these ones, actually, um, I get so many people who reach out and they're like, dude, I needed that. It was a perfect timing. This just sometimes when you're listening to content, it, it is the right time. And hopefully this is the kind of right time for you and all this. But the wisdom all starts off in how you can be better and how you can look at yourself and increase what you're doing the winter for the spring so we get into kind of like this mode of just being okay with what we're doing and everybody's that way i mean humans are creatures of habit right you drink your coffee at the same time every morning or you get to the office or you do the it's the same and it's comfort in habit right so sometimes we get into something we're so focused on moving the needle forward or focused on growth or focused on just keeping our head above water and sometimes just doing the business that we don't really look at the business. We're just kind of like, okay, keep it between the lines. Let's go. Let's go. And you're not paid attention. You're not paying attention to everything that's kind of around you. And that's really kind of where this all stems from. And I got to start off with a really genuine question for you to look at yourself. And I can't hear what you're thinking. So Think this all you want, but are you happy with your repeat numbers right now? Like, really think about that. If you don't know your repeat numbers and you're like, oh, yeah, a lot of people call me. No, no, no. Hold on. Are you happy with the frequency, the repeat, and how many people are repeating? Because 99% of you, Again, I'm just some dummy who sits in front of a screen in front of my computer and babbles to no one. So take this with a grain of salt. I'm not telling you this is absolutely right, but 99% of you think that repeat happens. Uh, you do good work, they just come back. And you, you completely take it and you just put it out in the world and you're like, you know what? Hopefully something happens. Hopefully I get something back. Hopefully I did good and on to the next one. Let's go find some new customers. And that's how, that's how business has kind of always been in a small scale. I mean, think about a mom, pa, you sell t-shirts. Like, hey, all right, come back and see us. That's it. That's all you did is say, come back and see us. Hopefully you got a, a cool shirt. You know, hopefully we did. You have no control of the repeat. But one of the really cool things with services, which is what we do in everything, window cleaning, pressure washing, all that stuff, window cleaning specifically is really cool because we're a service, we're a luxury service, second, and we are something that the minute we're done, the clock starts ticking to when we have to come back. 
it's really, really interesting how quickly the clock is. Like if you buy a really high-end, long-lasting fill-in-the-blank, the clock ticks and it may be 20 years. If you buy a roof, maybe it's 30 years before you need another roof. But with window cleaning, it's something that the windows get dirty the next day. Now, maybe just a little bit, you don't see it, but they get dirty right away. So the repeat has to happen, it's going to happen. You've created this experience, hopefully. People bought from you, they love you, they use you, they are in just genuinely happy with what you do. You control when they have it done again. Now this comes into the dentist clothes, I know, I know. Just hear me out again. If you've heard the dentist clothes and you're like, oh my gosh, here he goes again, and you're still not implementing it, you didn't hear it yet. I don't think you quite understand the absolute amazing aspect of the dentist clothes, but repeat customers are 100% in your control and absolutely should be in your control. If you do a job for somebody, they find you in an ad, you convince them to do you book it, you do it, they go, oh, this is so great. They love you right then and there. They love you. Now, if you just go, okay, great, call us when you need us, they're gonna love you less the next day, even less the next day, even less the next day, and they're gonna forget about you. Now, they may remember the company, they may have it written down, they may be able to check bank statements or the check they wrote or whatever, but you're leaving it the chance that they're just gonna forget about you as a company. They're gonna go, oh man, my windows are really dirty, a year later, two years later, whatever, and they're gonna be, I gotta call, what was that company again? Um, I think it was something with a, I don't know, I'll look it up, oh, that's it. And they pick one that they think it was, and it's not you. And you go, well, yeah, sometimes people just don't call me back, it's BS. They were absolutely happy with you, they will call you back. It was you who didn't get them to repeat. Now, it is not about just creating an awesome experience. It is not about just, you know, being super nice and making them super happy and all that other stuff. It's about you actually going and getting the scheduled stuff. That's the dentist clothes. You can get numbers. This is real numbers. You can get 75 to 98% of your customers going every six months, if not less. And you go, well, why would I want that? Like, that's taking advantage of the customer. No, it's not. Did you see how happy you made that person? Did you see what you did to them? They were so happy. If you did a service and they went, oh, this sucks. I don't want to do this again. It's like, you are the dentist. This is, I hate going to the dentist. Guess what? They still do it every six months. And they don't even like it. You go every six months, hopefully. And you don't even like it. Imagine if they love something, how often they'll do it. Now, you're keeping these people happy. You're scheduling them. You're booking them. You're confident. Hey, did you want to do this service again then in uh, three months or six months? Done. Put it in there. Get them in six months. Getting the repeat business is absolutely the key to growth. Everybody's like, oh, I need more people. I need more people. That's a, Yes, you always need more people coming in. I get that. But why, if you have 100 customers... Would you not have those 100 customers done every six months? Think about that. Think about this. If you really just have time, look, look this up and see I'm not full of crap. But look at your customers. Look at how many of them get services more than one time a year. Just go back. Do some research. Spend 20 minutes. Find it. Go back. Look. <clears throat> see how many of them Get it done every six months or less. Now, hypothetically, say you have a thousand customers and you may not, this is not, I'm just throwing out even numbers. If you have a thousand customers, how many of them actually got it done in a six month time? Okay, in a 12 month period, a thousand customers, some of them aren't even getting it done once. They may be only on every two years. What if you took that thousand customers and those thousand customers were done every six months? months. That number could be 100 customers, 200 customers, whatever that is. What if they were done every six months? Think about the size of the company you would need to be to do that. And you control that. You control that. The 76% of salespeople don't even ask for the clothes. That's insane. Oh, cool. Well, I hope everything is good. Let me know. 
They're going somewhere else. They're just not doing window cleaning. It's not in the forefront of the brain. It's in your brain. You're the window cleaner. Your company is the reason they're so happy right now at the service time. Book them in. Do the dentist close if you have not done that yet. It is so simple. All you do is make sure that three months and six months, you got a little calendar. Print out. The guys do. If you got crews, you do. It's in your folder. When you're all done with the service, you go around, hey, Mrs. Jones, everything looks, oh, it's so great. Oh, the lights, oh, thank you so much. You guys did such a good job. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, and remember, if you see anything, spots, streaks, smears, anything in any light, let us know. We'll come back, make it look perfect. Obviously, sometimes we miss things, and I hope we didn't on your project. We went over the windows. They look great, but let me know. Oh, I definitely will. Okay, great. And for your next service, did you want to do that in three months, or did you want to wait a full six months for that? Now, in six months, it's going to be actually uh, May 7th, and that's going to be the same appointment as this one was, about 9 a.m. if that works for you. I'm absolutely confident. I'm absolutely confident. They're absolutely excited about the service. They're genuinely happy. They love the experience. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I could feel this again. Yes, let's just do that. Almost 100% of people will be like, yes, absolutely. Every now and then, you'll get somebody be like, oh, actually, that may not be a good time. Uh, let me actually, uh, I'll get with you. Oh, definitely. Did you want me just to move it? Did you want to plan a different time? Would it be a different thing or any special events coming up that you want me to plan for? I always like to get people in the book because, you know, we fill up. Try that second. No, you know, I'll call you. I'll let you know. Okay, perfect. Fine. Seven days later, you're going to call them anyway. Hey, I just want to make sure everything looked good. Yeah, okay, great. Hey, I just saw in our papers that we didn't get you scheduled for that next appointment. And I know you had seven days to think about it. I'd love to get you in. Did that uh, date work for you? Think about that. You control when people repeat. Repeat. You have customers. The, the most expensive part of this in business is you getting the customers. They have to find you. They have to read about you. They have to like you. They have to talk to you. They have to book you. They have to trust you. And then they have to go ahead and get the service done and love it. That's a lot of stuff. The cost of acquisition on the front end is incredible. If you increase the repeat side, it's cheaper, way cheaper. You utilize the people you already know. If you have ever set a qualified lead, there's nothing better than a person who's already used you, liked you, and loved you. That's the best qualified lead you could possibly have. Repeat. You control the repeat. If you're not doing that, you're messing up. You are not getting the growth. You're blaming it on other things, and it is because of your repeat and lack of that that growth isn't happening. Another one's ads. I see this all the time, but people will go ahead and they'll do a bunch of ads and go, yeah, this doesn't work. No, nope. did ads and didn't get one call. Is it the ad that doesn't work or do your ads suck? Yeah. This is a hard, hard, hard one because you create something, you love it. It's like websites, man. We, we go through websites all the time and uh, we actually do on my YouTube channel, Jersey underscore nation. We do a breakdown on websites. We take a website. We just look at it and put it all out. And a lot of the times, and I get people to send me stuff too. And you know, if you've ever sent me something to look at, like, Hey, I got this flyer or whatever. I tell you straight, I'm not sugarcoating it. I'm not trying to make you feel good. I'm trying to show you where I think it's messed up and where you could be better. But even after that, even after you show a person, I could tell you most not all, some of you guys have had amazing stuff. But most of the stuff that people send me, I look at it, I'm like, I, I don't even know what you're doing here. You're like throwing stuff, this is awful. And I like tell you, here's all the stuff. I've even told people like, hey man, you just should start over. Get a template, dude, like, it is not that ads don't work. Ads work 100% of the country, in every service, in every industry, ads work amazingly. It's an ad. Everything's an ad. How do you think people found you in the first place? Well, no, they found me from the truck. This is because that's marketing an ad. They saw the ad on the side of your truck. Oh, they saw my guys working. Okay. You were marketing yourself because of what you looked like. And ads always work. If your ads didn't work, it's because your ads sucked. If you're like, ah, yeah, <laughs> whatever. This guy doesn't even know. <laughs> Not my area. Do you think, genuinely... Do you think that one person in the world, we'll say U.S., has ever not 
has never bought something because of an ad in anything. It's a billboard of a cheeseburger. It's a commercial. It's an ad or a logo or a brand or a smell or a, a site or a... Ads work. Bad ads don't work. If your ads didn't work, it's because they're bad. If you said, hey, I did these ads, I put this stuff out there and uh, didn't get a real good response. Because your ad sucks. Did you split test? Well, no. 99.9% of people don't split test enough. Split testing is literally when you put an ad, you go, wow, this is great. You put it out there for a day. You don't get any calls, some clicks. Change something. Put it back out. Did you get more clicks or less clicks? Less clicks, change it back to the way it was, change something else. Always change things. Ads need to be simple. You're too complicated. You're talking about things that you want to hear, not what they want to hear. I don't want to know if I'm getting my windows cleaned. I don't want to know what brand system you have or what. I just want to know that you have the best equipment. We have the state of the art, most amazing gear. We're going to make sure your windows are perfect. We have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Great. Well, I don't care what you're using, right? I have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. You do the thing. You're pro. People put these ads out there about, oh, we're this in state of the art and we're totally green. You're advertising the things you want to know. You're proud of your company. And you're talking about things that you're proud of, not what people care about. If your ad sucks, no one's going to call you. No one's going to click through. No one's going to look at it. No one's going to do anything because your ad sucks, not because ads suck. That's the hard truth. I don't know how many times people are on Facebook putting out there, I'm so smart, look at me. Yeah, ads don't, don't do that, it doesn't work. Certain ads don't work very well. A billboard doesn't work in window cleaning very well. It's not ads don't work, it's that a billboard doesn't work. On a billboard, you have to put your website or your, your phone number for somebody to call you you can't put a QR code or a click or whatever. Even if you put one picture and it says window cleaning with a number, somebody's driving, they have to see it, write it down, save it, they're past the billboard. It doesn't work. There's a lot of stuff that just doesn't work. And it's not ads don't work. It's that that specific type of ad doesn't work. Facebook ads work. EDDM works. SEO works. Google AdWords work. If you're doing one of the actual ads, a good ad in the right place, people will call you always. So look at that. It's your ad, not that ads don't work in your area. That's a big one. By the way, as I've now upset everybody, <laughs> I gotta say, uh, the podcast itself is brought to you by me, Jersey, and I am a rep from windowcleaner.com and as corny as my sh my uh, shameless plug is, this is it. I get paid on commission. Everyone knows that. And if you ever talk to me, it doesn't feel that way because I will never talk you into something that is not the best option for you. And I'll give you options. So just because I work on commission doesn't mean that I sell people more than they need, ever. It's just not my thing. I'd rather still be me than make a buck, right? But if you have something you would like to put in, you've already picked it out, you've already put it into your cart, just click save this cart. It's in checkout right above the buttons where you click like checkout. There's a little line that says save this cart. And then just text me and be like, yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. I sing your praises, tell you how awesome you are, and I will just verify address. And if we have a cart on file, I'll run it. I'll make sure there's fitment issues, if there's freebies, if there's any of that stuff, I can help with that. Big or small, it doesn't matter. I want to put in all your orders. Now, here's another thing. If you've not used a rep, you've not used me yet, I beg you, please let me be your rep. Save my number. By the way, save it right now. It's 862-312-2026. I'm the only jersey you know. Save it in your phone. Text me, call me, whatever. And if you are listening to this out in the field, just search Jer Jersey Window Cleaning or uh, uh, Jersey WCR something. You'll find my number. It's listed everywhere I've ever posted anything. But let me know how I can do something. I love also when people are like, hey man, I'm in the field, I got an order real quick. And they just give me the items, I throw it in there, it takes two seconds, you don't even have to search the website. And you go, hey man, I got this thing I need, I'm gonna take a quick picture and send it to you. Can I take it, send it, I, I make things easy, that's what I do and I get paid by putting orders in, it costs you nothing extra. Not a penny more does it cost you. 
to let me put an ad in. Not an ad, an order. <laughs> and I get credit for it. So please let me do that. Shameless plug over. Um, also, uh, American Window Cleaner Magazine is phenomenal. You're a nerd. I'm a nerd. We like to listen to podcasts and everything else. Get the magazine. How, how else can you convince anybody you're serious about this? Now you get a window cleaning magazine to your door, real paper magazine, like stickers. You're putting them on everything. You're in the culture, man. Do that. Get the magazine. It's awcmag.com. 69 bucks a year. Get the subscription. It's 12 months. Pictures, articles, everything. Be a nerd. Be better than your competition. Get the magazine. Last thing, um, I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com, of course, but I also have my own YouTube channel that I'm trying to get a ton of subscribers on, and it's slow going. So go, uh, if you're on YouTube, search Jersey underscore nation. Just give me a subscribe. That'd be rad. Go through and like thumbs up all the videos or comment. You know how the algorithms work. I need more window cleaners to find me. Uh, so go and do that. Anyway, back to getting yelled at. Another big one is the optimizing your calendar, your tools, just optimizing in general. And I'm going to go over this real quick. You can get more done in the same amount of time with the same amount of people if you were more efficient. Right? If you could optimize your calendar, so now I'm not driving 20 minutes between jobs. I'm driving five minutes between jobs. If I have water fed, water fed doubles your time if you're over a ladder. I'm okay, now my guys can work faster, safer. I don't have to be insured to three stories if I'm standing on the ground. Right? The optimization part is where some companies really fail. This is how. And you guys know this uh, story I've always talked about, but years and years and years ago, I knew a guy, almost $3 million company. He was profiting under $30,000 for the year. Like, that is, doesn't make sense. When you look at that, you optimize your company. You get a better structure, you get better tools, you get a calendar that works you know, with your scheduling. You get all that stuff, you get it all done. Now all of a sudden you're getting more done in the same amount of day. Your guys are less, there's less wasted time. Send a crew of two instead of a crew of three. A crew of three never is more efficient. Two crews of two on a project would be more efficient because you have a crew chief and a tech. Those two people work in tandem. You put three and then there's just one guy standing around. A crew of one in a house doesn't work. It's not as efficient as a crew of two. So be optimized in your efficiency. Efficiency is the part that starts to lack because you're just trying to get it done, right? So you get and you go, man, I'm so busy. Like we're working like 40 plus hours and we're gonna have to get another crew. Okay, that may be. And that's awesome. Congrats if that's where you're going. But is it? that you need a new crew or can you optimize your crew? And every time I talk about optimization, people go, man, like, I feel like you're just trying to work these people to death. It's not. But if something takes five minutes instead of 50 minutes, I just, I can do 10 times more with the same amount of time. I'm not working harder, I'm just doing it smarter. Efficiencies are something that needs to be worked on at least twice a year, at least. Winter's a big time for that. Efficiencies are big because when you get so busy, you lose track of everything, you just have to get it done. Just get it done, get on the next thing, get it done, we're so behind. Cool, do you got a flow board? Is your calendar optimized to different cities or regions or areas you work? Or crews specifically in certain areas? Is the drive time drop down? If you are always in city A and you're always in city B, why not have every Tuesday and Thursday you're in city B, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday you're in city A? That's how you schedule. So when they call, you know if they're from city B, you just put them in a Thursday or a Tuesday. Now, when you're in that city, I don't have to drive back and forth, I'm always in that city. If you're doing route, oh man, we need another route guy. Just doing so much. Could you or could you sell more in that area? So now they're going boom, 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 instead of boom, boom, boom. Can you optimize that route? We optimize the route every quarter for, for route. Optimize the route for route. Optimize the calendar. For, you know what I'm saying? 
what we did was I put everything into the calendar or uh, everything into an optimizer and looked at where the places were and I built the schedule. Redo the schedule. I always pick up places. We always lose places. We always get somebody on more frequently, right? I'm always picking up more route stuff. Optimize that route. So now in the very day, there's a list. I got 30 places in order of how to do them. I know exactly where I'm going. I'm not jumping all over. Optimize gets more done. If you optimize what you're doing, you can do more without overdoing it. That's a big one that is hard for people to really do because they think that they're doing their optimize. And you're telling me, and I don't think any company anywhere is like this, but you're telling me that you can't optimize anything? You can't improve anything that you're doing? That I find incredibly hard to believe. So if you are doing something in the calendar or whatever, look at it. Take some time. If you're out of the field, your job is to make sure the field is running perfectly. Take a few hours and really break it down. I'm telling you, it is nothing more awesome than optimizing. All of a sudden you're like, dude, I just freed, I got two hours a day more. Fill it in, I don't need another crew, I got two more hours. I know guys that added water fed instead of a crew because water fed doubled their time. They just got twice as much work done water fed. Like if you optimize, it's absolutely incredible for that. And people don't do that. People don't look at it, and you may be people. I'd say 100% of businesses, every one of you that's listening, you, yeah, you have optimization that you could be doing that you're not. You just haven't looked at it in a while. It's boring. It's boring as crap, but it's so valuable. And the last one I'm going to touch on, by the way, is one I really, 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 really love, love. And uh, a good friend of mine, uh, we were just talking about this and it really got me kind of thinking in again, but it's a marketing calendar. You know, we already talked about repeat, right? We talked referrals all the time, okay, reviews and all that stuff. You gotta do all that, but you always have to get new people in. You're always marketing, you're always trying to grow the new stuff too. It should not be your only focus, but it should be a focus. Now, if you don't use a marketing calendar, which I'm guessing you don't, you go, hey, we got some money, let's advertise. A marketing calendar goes like this. Okay, when season starts, there's no dates. Week one is this. This is every day, this is what I do. Week two, week three, week four, week, and I go out. My season is six months I'm gonna be advertising for. I know everything I'm doing in those six months. Rain or shine or busy or not, it's there. Now, through the winter, I know my marketing bu budget, because I'm basing it on say 10% of last year's gross is my marketing budget for this year. Now I know what I'm doing, what I'm doing. Okay, week one, two, three, I need this much money. Uh, week seven, I need that. I know all that. I also know that if my EDDM goes on week seven, eight, and nine, I know that I need to have it printed and done by week four. Marketing calendars make sure that every day your marketing ads, marketing, social posts, all that stuff is getting done every day regardless of what's going on. Because here's the thing that happens every time. You get busy and go, I'm so busy I can't advertise, I gotta shut everything down. You just stopped your growth. You just stopped your growth. You just literally stopped your growth. It's like, hey, I'm driving to California, ooh, I don't wanna run out of gas, so I'm just gonna park. You're never gonna get to California. Sure, you'll have gas. That makes no sense, if you're busy, it's the time to advertise. People go, well, man, I'm booked out three weeks. Okay, great, well, advertise the crap out of it because you're so busy right now. More people will see it, you'll have a better ROI, more people will call, fill in week four, fill in week five. Oh, I don't wanna wait week five. Well, here, if you can wait till uh, July 7th, starting that week is our summer, we can knock 10% uh, off, I can take off, $50, I could whatever, because that's our slow time. So if you can wait till that time, I'll get you in. Fill in everything. The problem with a seasonal business is we advertise just sometimes. We get busy and we go, oh, we're busy season. Okay, well now it's slow. Crap, I gotta advertise it slow. No one's gonna buy a cheeseburger if they're not hungry. You have to optimize, and the only way to optimize that is to use a marketing calendar, and you have to create a marketing calendar. And it sucks, it's so long. It takes so much time. Once you build a marketing calendar, Year one, year two, you duplicate change. 
what works, what doesn't, add something, focus on something, your split test changes, all that's in the marketing calendar. That means you follow that calendar religiously when it's done and you don't miss anything. And these are just the ways that you can improve what you're doing now. Sometimes you need a kick in the pants. And I'm telling you, one of these things we talked about, you could be changing. If you want to be bigger, if you want to be better, stronger, make more money, just have a stronger company. Say things are slow. It's uh, the economy. Cool. Then you're in the wrong economy. The economy can change, but that means that you're just not doing everything you can to grow and be bigger and better. Could you have a down year? Yes, but could growth happen? Yes. I don't know. I don't know. It's just been really cold. Yeah, that happens. It's also going to be really nice at certain points. All of these optimizations and everything that you could be doing and changing could happen in the winter planning for next year. Your growth could be out of this world. You could double this next year. You just have to do it. You have to kick yourself in the pants and do it. And if you haven't, re-listen to this episode and look at the pieces that you could be better at and be better at those. It's just that simple. By the way, if you didn't know, I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. Shameless plug. I know. Wait. Please let me put your orders in. Uh, I am uh, asking for every kind of order. I, I genuinely, genuinely appreciate the people who go out of their way to let me put their orders in. I've been putting people's in orders in too. Certain people haven't put an order in in like five years. I put it in for them. It's absolutely like so genuinely amazing that you guys let me do that and you let me continue to live my life and continue to do stuff like this because of it. So thank you so much. But my number is 862-312-2026. Genuinely. Let me, let me know how I can help. Also get the magazine. I see when you get a magazine, um, America Window Cleaner, AWC, uh, MAG.com is the website, but get a subscription. Uh, also genuinely really means the world to me when you guys do that. Especially guys that find the podcast, you know, after they're like, Hey man, I'm buying everything from you and I got a subscription. Oh my gosh. Like, Genuinely, thank you. That's, I mean, I can continue to put out content, uh, even if not all of it's good, because of you. So, thank you. Um, and again, my YouTube channel, personal YouTube channel, Jersey underscore nation, go subscribe. It costs you nothing, and it makes me feel vindicated and awesome. So, go do that. But either way, hope you got a kick in the pants. I hope I wasn't too Dr. Phil on you. And uh, until next week, go change some stuff. Really look at your company, really be better, but more importantly, go out there and be ethical.